Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Donut Dog Show. Um, we're going to have 60 minutes or a little bit less uh, of unscripted Donut Entertainment. And as doctors of Donut, we prescribe healthy choices in Donut. Today, I am your host, Myra Wenzel, with my co host, Luis Quintanilla. And we have another Luis here with us, our, our guest, uh, Luis Beltran. So, how about you introduce yourself? All right, thank you. Thank you, Mayra. Thank you, Luis. Uh, so I am a Mexican. I am a Microsoft MVP. Uh, currently, I'm living in Czech Republic because I am pursuing my PhD in engineering inf informatics. I uh, usually uh, do research about artificial intelligence, uh, facial emotion uh, detection and recognition. And uh, yeah, I love uh, .NET, uh, especially working with uh, Samarin mobile applications, and cloud computing with Azure. Awesome! Welcome to the show. Uh, and I hear today you're you're here to talk about serverless machine learning. All right. Exactly. Before we yeah, before we jump into that, uh, let's check our checkup doc. Let's do it. All right, so uh, for today's doc, we're gonna be talking to you about the API, um, custom vision API here, uh, and a set of libraries that are included with it. So if you're not familiar, uh, custom vision is one of the cognitive, one of the offerings from cognitive services. And as the name sort of implies, what it allows you to do is it allows you to build custom vision uh, applications, um, you know, using uh, very, with very little to no uh, machine learning knowledge. Now, there's various ways that you can actually go about interacting uh, with the custom vision uh, library. Uh, you can certainly use the web portal. So if you like, or if you would prefer that sort of low code experience, uh, you can certainly go through the web portal and, and you know, build your project that way. Um, but in this case, uh, we're gonna be going through the code first approach and how you can use the REST API, specifically the custom vision client library uh, for building a custom vision application. Now, just to you know, backtrack a little bit, you know, the types of problems that you might sort of solve with things like custom vision is, for example, if you were trying to classify cars, right? So if you, you, you have a camera, you have a feed and you're maybe trying to count how many cars have you know, gone into your parking lot, something like that. Um, that's where something like custom vision might come in handy, um, right? Uh, so, so there's a lot of really useful applications for, you know, for this, uh, uh, for this type of product and service offering, right? Um, now you'll notice here that there's actually different types of languages that you can use uh, with this client library. There's uh, C Sharp, Go, Java, uh, JavaScript, Python, and if none of these languages actually have a client library, you're more than welcome to use a REST API as well. Now, in this case, uh, this tutorial or, or quick start sort of guides you through the entire process that you would have to go through in order to build a custom vision project. Um, so it's sort of, you know, that, that's sort of where it starts. Uh, but mainly what is involved with this is you're going to have to upload images, right? Because you're going to be working with, uh, with images. So you want to upload them and tag them. And these tags are essentially kind of like what I was mentioning before is if you want to classify things, right? You want to make sure that you tag them correctly. So if it's different types of flowers or fish or whatever it is that you're trying to classify, you want to make sure you, you tag it with the appropriate label so that you can then build and train machine learning, uh, custom vision machine learning models off of that. So if you want to do that, right? You're using your, your standard sort of, uh, you know, .NET IO set of libraries to sort of manipulate the images and, and get them in some format. They will eventually uh, use the, the custom vision API uh, to sort of uh, you know upload them up to to Azure. Uh, the training part it's just uh, a matter of uh, creating a project um, as it says here, and then essentially just um, you know kick, kicking off that project. Um, and then after a certain amount of time, uh, you're going to be presented with a model that you can then go ahead and export and and publish. Right, so you can go ahead and uh, not only uh, publish um, your your sort of current iteration or the current version of your model. Uh, you can also test predictions, right? So once your model is done training, you can go ahead and give it new images to see how well it actually performs, right? And, and try to do it that way. Um, and you also have different options when it comes to running an application for, um, you know, for, for this type of uh, you know, application or for this type of model. This, this type of model. Um, one other thing that I mentioned is uh, sort of because it is part of .NET, right? So once you're done training this model, you also have the option of using something like ML.NET. Uh, you know, Luis mentioned Xamarin or something like that, right? Perhaps you might use .NET to create a web API or, or another form of application. 
um, that you can run um, and use this model inside of. Uh, so make sure to check it out. Um, the link is actually uh, in the banner that's playing here, right? It's over at aka.ms slash custom vision client. Uh, and yeah, make sure to give it a look. So with that, um, I'll actually hand it off to Luis, who is actually gonna show you how you might use, um, you know, different tools to build these types of, um, you know, sort of AI and machine learning models. All right, let's jump to our hallway track then. All, All right. right. Yes. So should I go? Yeah. Go for it. OK, perfect. Thank you very much. So let's have fun and let's uh, learn about serverless machine learning. So thank you again for the opportunity. And please, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know, and I will do my best to try to answer them. So yeah, this is uh, me. And <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we have Latin America represented. So yeah, from Mexico or Czech Republic all the way. So yeah, that's uh, you have my contact details here, uh, my email or Twitter, or I also uh, write some posts in my blog. It's in Spanish, but yeah, hopefully it's still, uh, you, you can understand. And um, I'm from Brazil as well, so we have Latin America well covered too. <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. Yes, yes. So full Latin American show. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, this is what we are going to talk about. Uh, just very brief intro, then talk about machine learning, cognitive services, uh, how we are going to interact with uh, WhatsApp to send the messages and receive information, and finally, of course, the serverless and integration demo. <laughs> so. So, so yeah, you know that uh, .NET is a platform that we love and the, that we can use to build uh, whatever we, we want. We have uh, desktop applications, we have mobile applications with Xamarin, with uh, also a Unity to develop the gaming applications. There is the ML.NET to build uh, machine learning projects. We can also interact with the cloud as it was introduced by, by Luis with the custom vision, for example, API. <coughs> so and we also have uh, different tools. We can use Visual Studio, Visual Studio for Mac, or Visual Studio Code. So we can go cross-platform. It doesn't matter if we are using uh, Linux, Windows, Mac. We can still develop uh, this type of applications. <coughs> so uh, machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence field. The idea is to develop programs or applications uh, that use initial data to understand what is happening, to find some patterns, and of course, make predictions. And these models are not static. Uh, they can be uh, improved in, on their accuracy with uh, new examples with uh, new data. So we, we want to make them, let's say, uh, perfect or at least uh, more, more accurate. Uh, we don't tell them explicitly what is the output. They learn from the data. So <clears throat> if we provide, let's say, pictures of dogs and cats, of course, we maybe we add some labels. This is called supervised learning. Then in the training process, uh, which is uh, uh, made by iterations, it will learn the patterns, it will learn to distinguish between dogs and cats. <coughs> After that, when we present a new picture, it will tell us with some uh, probability uh, uh, percentage, okay, I am 80% uh, certain that this is a dog, for example. And as I said, we can increase that uh, uh, accuracy with more examples. Sometimes we don't know the, 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 the classes. For example, when we have uh, different customers and we would like to uh, uh, categorize them by maybe some profiles to later uh, provide some uh, targeted marketing. So we are going to find which customers are similar to each other based on their behavior, what they uh, search what they bought in the past or maybe where are they from. So yeah, that, that's something that you can still do with machine learning. And these are the, the main tasks, classification, 
clustering, which, as I said, they are both similar. The difference is that in classification, you know beforehand the classes or categories, uh, like, for example, test text. A spam or not a spam. You provide some examples, and later, when new email uh, comes to your uh, inbox, it will know. Okay, based on this model, uh, I will classify this as a spam because it includes some specific words or it comes from some certain domains. We, we define the rules or we find the rules. In clustering, we don't know the classes, but we know that certain members or certain data is close to each other. And in regression, basically, we are predicting a value. For example, the price of a car or a taxi trip or maybe the price of a product. <laughs> so the, yeah, these are some uh, tasks of machine learning. Another one, which is based on the um, uh, text analysis, is chatbots. It's something that maybe we have interact with. The idea is that we provide, so we, we talk to this, let's say, digital assistant in the same way that we will talk to a friend or to uh, a clerk, a sales clerk, like, OK, I would like to make a reservation in this hotel from Monday to uh, Friday. And of course, it will th that person will understand, OK, we what is our purpose? Maybe it will ask more questions, like, OK, what type of room would you like? How many people you are uh, registering with? <coughs> and with a chatbot, it's essentially the same, but of course, there is no person. Instead, there is a program, there is a software. We are talking to this software. Maybe we are using our voice, or we are uh, <coughs> typing this information. Uh, we don't need special commands, even though it is a program. So in this case, this software analyzes the text, analyzes the request. It has a natural language processing. This is the type of task. and the objective is to find what is the intention of the person that is uh, uh, requesting something and maybe some context, some ex extra uh, data, like um, the, the, the date or the location or maybe how, how many rooms you want to reserve. And yeah. Yes, yes. Quick question there, Luis. So, uh, sorry. So in this uh, analyzing the request, you mentioned natural language processing. Um, looking back to one of the previous slides that you had in terms of mapping it, you had classification, clustering, um, and, and regression, I believe, right? Uh, is natural language processing something different, uh, or could is it one of these tasks as well? Uh, yeah, that's an inter interesting question. Well, in this case, uh, I would say that, uh, OK, <laughs> uh, I, I am not, not certain at all. So it can be maybe classification, because we, we want to categorize the intents, what, what the person wants, depending on some uh, examples. We, we can train a model based, based on that. So 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 yeah, we, we can maybe use classification task for this. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Awesome. Thank you. OK. Great. So, so, so yeah, after uh, we get uh, what is the purpose of, of the of whatever the, the person said, <clears throat> we can also obtain uh, some context, uh, as I was uh, uh, saying, and these are called intent, uh, sorry, entities, entities. So maybe we can get the date, the place, and with this information, maybe we can connect to another software, uh, maybe perform or search a, a query in the database, okay, is, are any rooms available on these dates? Or uh, what is the price for a room class A for three people, for example? And yeah, we, we and with this data, we can uh, the bot can compose a reply using the same channel, maybe voice or maybe text, or even provide some pictures uh, so the, the, the user can interact with this uh, information. And another task is also uh, computer vision. In this case, uh, there are several uh, possibilities. Maybe, m m m essentially, we have uh, some multimedia. Maybe we have some videos. We have some images. And uh, we want some uh, software to, to analyze what is happening there to detect some specific objects, like, OK, in this specific coordinate or position, there is a boss. Uh, here there is a cyclist, and here there is like a uh, semaphore or whatever. Traffic light. <laughs> Traffic light, exactly, exactly. Yes, thank you. 
uh, or maybe it we can um, create some application that uh, identifies some brands or even this using the, the knowledge, maybe it was built with a neural network, it will tell us what is happening. It can, it can create a, a description. If we analyze this picture, maybe any of us uh, have different uh, uh, understanding or maybe we can describe Some person can say, okay, there is a, there are some taxis there. Maybe there, this is, I don't know, New York or Prague. Maybe someone identifies the, the, the buildings. <clears throat> or some other people could say, okay, this is a person with a dog on the street. So it can create some knowledge based on this data. And there are other, um, let's say, possibilities like analyzing some text, perform OCR, optical character recognition, and it will tell us what is the text, what is inside. Uh, or maybe it can also detect uh, faces and describe these faces uh, with emotion, if the person is wearing a glass or is something that was popular, uh, especially these, these days, that if the person is wearing a mask or, a no, or not. Uh, maybe depending on this, uh, it can be uh, granted some access to some building. If it is not wearing a mask in order to protect the other people, uh, you are not allowed maybe to, to enter or you are reminded to, to, to wear your mask, please. So all these tasks, uh, maybe you need to be uh, expert or researcher or artificial intelligence or data scientist. But what uh, uh, what is for uh, developers? What if we would like to implement this uh, nice feature in our applications? Uh, and well, sometimes we need uh, like to go to production uh, very quickly, very, very fast. We, we don't have, let's say, too much time to learn about this. So we can use some pre-built uh, machine learning models or artificial intelligence models uh, created by cloud providers. In this case, Microsoft, there is the cognitive services. So you can um, give your applications some abilities, ability to see, for example, to use uh, vision like custom vision, which uh, Luis mentioned at the beginning, or also computer vision to perform the task that, that we mentioned earlier. Or maybe we want to provide some text and it will analyze it. It will get like the sentiment if this, uh, maybe we are analyzing the feedback from customers. So is it positive or negative or maybe neutral? Uh, maybe we would like, we'd like to translate it to another language. Mm. And these services, we, we have seen it, let's say uh, in applications, for example, on Teams, it is quite common when we organize some events. Maybe if the, the talk is in English, we can ask the, the 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 presenter. Okay, could you please turn on the subtitles in PowerPoint or even on, on Teams? It is possible to get the transcription in Spanish, maybe for our uh, attendees. Uh, so yeah, we can also use this capability in cognitive services. And there are other categories such as language and decision for anomaly detection, for instance, in case of decision. For computer vision, basically, uh, as Liz uh, mentioned. We can provide some picture. Maybe we have the file or we have the URL. We send a request, HTTP, HTTP request, or we use a library, an SDK, and we will get a response. This response comes in JSON format. So uh, that's why you can use any language to, to communicate and to get this response, to process it, and then use it in our applications. OK, so it will tell us, OK, there is a computer, there is a uh, smartphone, there is a person typing, and, and so on. And another capability is uh, the language understanding intelligent service, which is basically natural language processing as a service. If there were uh, there, there was not uh, enough with uh, Luis and me, this is another Luis. <laughs> so to, this is another another service. In this case, we provide utterances, we provide examples. So. Uh, it will learn, it will find some patterns. Okay, what are the intents for this? Uh, sorry, what are the utterances? What are some examples for this intent? What is the user trying to, 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 to do uh, after saying or stating uh, something? So the process, and I will show you in a minute, the, the portal, the Luis portal, 
we are going to create intents and entities for every intent we provide utterances and in each example in each in each sentence we will identify some entities sometimes if we use pre-built entities it will detect uh, uh, immediately places for example like seattle or mexico or we can also uh, it can also identify numbers like uh, not only digits one two three but also uh, like a position like first third or even uh, i don't know other things like like dates not only again uh, all months or days but also expressions like uh, tomorrow yesterday and so on so it is a bit uh, smart then we train a model with some clicks so yeah let's let's see that in this case uh, first for the cognitive service pass for the computer vision, I have already created a cognitive service resource. So in our portal, we simply uh, create the cognitive services or a specific one. The difference is that we have a cognitive service, uh, let's say resource that can be used for different tasks such as computer vision, uh, text analysis, anomaly detection and others. So in this case, this risk for this resource, I will just be interested in the keys and endpoints because I will add those to my uh, program. And you will see that in a second. <laughs> so in this case, I have my key here. So yeah, you can, uh, cop I can copy or you can see it later. I can try generate it, of course. And there is also the endpoint. In this case, I am using an extension so that's why you cannot see it, but, but yeah, it is, it is there. You, you will see it in a second in the, in the code. And after that, I can go to luis.ai. And here I have my, my application. The name is Weatherbot. And for this one, I will provide some examples. I would like to know the weather of some place. I will use this in combination with my image description bot. So as you can see, I have one intent, which is get city weather. I also have known, but I will talk about this one a bit later. So forget city weather, I provide some examples. These are known as utterances. So you can see, is it snowing in Seattle right now? What is the current climate in Cortazar? Is it raining in London? And so on. And this Seattle, Cortazar, London, Prague, these are places. And for this, we have an entity. This entity is pre-built. I did not uh, provide like, uh, I did not create the entity like a custom one, but in this case, it was uh, automatically, it, sorry, it automatically detects from my utterances the, the places or the geography. This is useful for uh, rivers, continents, um, yeah, everything related with, with geography. And so you mentioned, you mentioned that you have the, this pre-built pre one, so, Mm -hmm. I imagine that you could also like for your business or something like that, create like something based on your product names and things <laughs> that you offer. Okay. Definitely, definitely. When we go here to entities, we can create and we select, okay, machine learn, machine learn. In this case, we it's for us, we provide examples of what, what we would like to identify. Like for example, yeah, product names or some categories or mm -hmm. yeah, some something like uh, uh, list, we can also provide some, some examples. Yes, and also there is a private entity, which different cases, this varies or from uh, the language. When we create the application, we specify the language of our um, mm -hmm. uh, service. So maybe for Spanish, there are uh, less categories. Of course, in English, there are, there are many more. So, so yeah, that, that's the idea. So we will use this in our utterances. And we provide different examples, of course, uh, the more the merrier. Uh, in this case, I provided like five, yes. And after that, I can train my model. It will take some time to understand this, to find some patterns and also to distinguish between other intents. And I can test it before moving this to, or use it in production. I can test it. I can maybe provide some other example. I want to know the weather in, uh, I don't know, um, Washington, for example. And yeah, this example, a specific um, sentence is not part 
of the uh, utterances. So this is, let's say, something new. But it knows or identifies some keywords that can help to understand the, the intent. And it will tell me, OK, this is the, your intent, get Siri weather. And if I go to, um, to, 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 to inspect, I will get that the entity is Washington. I can also, of course, compare with the published one. But the most relevant part is the JSON, uh, which is this one. So I can uh, include this uh, for processing in my application. So you can see, OK, these are the intents. And then I have my, uh, my entity which is Washington of type geography version 2. Of course, there, there might be some other entities. So I can uh, perform, I don't know, link you to entities or uh, maybe some serializations to get that specific value. When I publish this model, yes? No, I was just going to ask. In this case, yeah, in this case, uh, it seems like it's pretty high, 90% uh, um, confident. Yeah. But I suspect that there's going to be examples where it's not going to be confident and it's not, you know, uh, it's not right, right? It's not accurate. Um, so, so what do you do in those cases? Um, how can you sort of uh, account for that and make it make your model, your Lewis model, better? Yes. For example, we can maybe ask for to users for some feedback, like, okay, uh, maybe they were not satisfied. Uh, or if we, we are using this in production, or when we identify, okay, these examples are not correct. So one one way would be even uh, to 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 add some examples to the known intent because maybe they are categorized there and for for some reason. So the, the known intent should be like everything else that is not related with your main and main in, in, intent. Sorry. Uh, as I said, well, um, I can also add some more uh, examples to, to boost the, the confidence of, of this intent. It also supports versions. So it is not like, OK, if I add these more examples and maybe the probability that I get is lower, I will affect my production uh, environment. So yeah, I can, there is always like the staging environment. So, so yeah, I can add more, more cool. examples uh, uh, to, to, to boost or, or to increase the probability. We got a question from Robert asking yes. if we can catch behaviors from a sentence. So it was like, I think it's, I believe it's called sentiment analysis, right? If it's mad or angry or happy. So can you use Lewis for that? Um, yeah, for that, I would rather use the text analytics, which is the cognitive service. You can immediately send to, to the specific endpoint uh, to, to get the if it is positive, negative, or neutral. Actually, you can get the main uh, sentiment and also the probability for each of these uh, categories. It was 70% positive, 50% neutral, 50% negative. Uh, so, so yeah, that you, I will use that one for, for that. OK. And to use this into my application, I can go to Manage and then Azure Resources. And here I will see the, uh, OK, no, it was in Publish Settings. Yes, I will get, uh, OK, this is a second because I'm not getting, I should get the, the endpoint, but I cannot find it, this is a second. Um, well, if not, I have here my my filter. It should be under on the actual resources, but so for some reason I am not like editing. Okay, it doesn't matter at all. So I will get this endpoint where I can send my my request. So if I go to my code here, you can see that I have my Luis URL, and I create a method. I provide some text. I sent the, the request like, OK, I want to know the weather of some specific city. And I will look for the top intent. If this top intent is get city weather, I will extract the entity. Why do I do that? Because later, I can connect to another service. In this case, I am using Open Weather Map. And I simply pass the city to this uh, method. And I will get the information, OK? Uh, the current weather is, I don't know, snowy or raining, and also the temperature. And you, you will see that in the implementation. 
So, so yeah, that, that, it's not only like, okay, yeah, this is the intent, this is the entity, but now using it for something, for some purpose, right? To actually answer the question of my, my user. So, and how so, yeah. does it detect the intent in terms of, is it like when it's a certain percentage of probability of, of like the, the, the sentence you submitted? Yes, actually, I, I can. Yeah, I can obtain the, the the probability level, and maybe if it okay. uh, is below some threshold, I can okay. say, okay, I did not understand you. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, but if it uh, is high, yes, I, I will present the question. The, the the best is that I can even save or store this sentence for to to analyze later or to improve my my model. Uh, yeah, I can save it to to a database. Like, okay, this is this is these are the results in production from our customers, and mm -hmm. what we can do to to increase it, or what was the feedback? Was because maybe we can also ask our users, okay, was this correct or not? And yeah, they can help us uh, for for that. Of course, we can also try to avoid like some trolling. Like, yeah, maybe the percentage was ninety percent, but the user was not satisfied. But we can check that one a bit later. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's also part of of the of the problem, let's say it's not only the, the implementation, but also what we do with the data or with the feedback of our users. Yeah. Okay. So I, I already mentioned this uh, open weather map API, but that one is free. So you can, well, it, it also has some uh, pricing application, but uh, yeah, you can use the, the free one. And for computer vision, I also have, of course, <coughs> the, the code, as you can see, it's quite short because I am using the SDK. Uh, a Nugget package. I have not talked about the project, but I will mention that one a bit later. It's the serverless part. But yeah, I have also some some methods. Of course, it requires some authentication, so we need to provide like the endpoint and our uh, key to to use it. And then we simply send the uh, the URL of our picture. Uh, you you might wonder, okay, maybe we can use the URL or maybe we can use the string. For our purpose, we will work with URL, and you will see why later. So this is my uh, parameter, image URL. We, we call the analyze image method from our computer vision client, and we will get some response. In this case, we can I will present in some example, sorry, in some text, uh, the summary, which means some sentences that describe what is happening in this picture. If there are some categories, okay, I will present them. If there are some tags, objects, brands, or faces, or even famous people like celebrities, they will appear in our report, or maybe some famous landmarks. So, so yeah, the code is quite, let's say, easy. Thank you, C Sharp, for that. And yeah, as I said, we are going to uh, ask our users. Uh, for some uh, text or from some images by using WhatsApp, which is a yeah, very well-known um, <coughs> platform for communication. And uh, Twilio is one of the platforms, uh, communication platform as a service that we can use to work with the WhatsApp API. Uh, WhatsApp doesn't have like a public API that we can use to implement it in our applications. So it's a closed API. But for businesses, it is possible to access this, but you need to, uh, let's say, get access from or by using a partner, a Facebook partner. If we go to the, to the directory, we might find uh, some companies where we can uh, acquire or buy the access to the WhatsApp API. And as I said, for developers, one of these platforms is Twilio. Uh, that we can use different languages. C Sharp is one of them, so that's uh, perfect for our purpose. Uh, to uh, use uh, at the beginning a sandbox environment where we can interact with this uh, bot or with some uh, application, and we can get uh, the, the text, or we can also send some information to our uh, users or customers. For this, I will go to the... <coughs> Uh, dashboard to activate the, the sandbox. So let me just refresh this page. And Before we get started here, um, yes, yes. quick question there. So this is in the scenario where I want to deploy my application or use some other channel of communication with my users. 
But um, exactly. if I remember correctly, Lu Luis had uh, that AI had this uh, um, sort of testing environment, right? Where you had like this chat box, and then you can just test your your um, model mm -hmm. there. Yes. If I didn't want to go through it, and all I needed was to like you know interact with my customers in the web, is there a way that I can just I don't know embed like take some core code to embed that chat uh, sort of you know widget with my Lewis yes. model into my website, or or is that not possible through cognitive yes. services or Lewis AI? Yes, that's a good question. For that, you can create an Azure Bot service uh, on Azure portal, and you can deploy it to different channels. One of the possibilities is that you can get a widget uh, that you can embed in your web application. So without any, let's say, developer experience, you can just paste it in your HTML, and uh, your users will uh, access, let's say, this uh, box where they can talk to our our bot. Uh, so yeah, that is also possible. Yes. Cool. Uh -huh. Yes. Excellent. And we can also integrate it to Teams or to Facebook or to some other channels. That's the advantage of Azure Bot Service. Yes. And we have a question about pricing for yes. to use WhatsApp into production site. So the tool you. Uh huh. Yes, uh, actually, well, uh, we, we can, I think I don't have a slide for that. We can, we can check it, but uh, you can also start for free because it gives you some uh, credit at the beginning. Uh, you don't need to register any credit card, so you can uh, very quickly uh, start trying this one. Uh, but yeah, we can also explore the, the pricing. Uh, I will check it in a minute but but yeah it, it is it is let's say reasonable reasonable price it is not expensive at, at all so so i will yeah, imagine that the the outage the other day impacted quite a few business because at least in latin america i know that they use whatsapp like quite quite heavily for for business yes um, exactly exactly yes so okay so i, I will uh, talk about that in in a second so for this example, I have my sandbox here. I have already added this number. You can even add it if, if you want. This is the, the phone number. So you can just send this uh, message to join the sandbox. So I will do it. Join close basic. And it will detect, OK, message received. And I can <clears throat> start talking or, or interacting with this bot. I will not do it because that's uh, like the program that I will show in a second. I can even send some messages from here, but as I said, I will not do it for the moment. Uh, but yeah, it's very easy to, to configure this, but at the end, I will need to uh, maybe add something, uh, some URL. Okay, what, you, you, because you, you can connect your application, your webhook with uh, with your uh, WhatsApp, let's say, uh, number with this uh, number. In this case, it will tell me, okay, um, when the when I, when the user sends a message, do you have anything, some API or something that can process that message and do something? And yeah, I will provide some some URL. This URL will come from an Azure function uh, endpoint. But I will talk precisely about serverless part in a second. But the idea is that this uh, API or this Azure function endpoint will take the text and will do something with it. But not, actually, not only a text, because we can also send pictures to, to this bot, and that's the purpose of, of this uh, as well, to perform some computer vision. You already saw the code that where we send uh, an, an image, and it will process it, and it, it will send a uh, a, uh, a string back. So yeah, we will connect these dots, let's say, in, in a minute. Uh, here, I will I just show you about the Twilio. And of course, we have some C-sharp code. Uh, maybe we can uh, get some, some message. Uh, as you can see, we, we, we have some string. And we would like to build a response. In, in this case, this is for like to send something to, to, to the user. Like uh, maybe uh, hello, or this is the result of the analysis, something. Uh, again, in this case, I am using a library, Twi Twilio, TwiML. Basically, we just create a messaging response object. And uh, yeah, we just 
pass the, the string, and, and that's all you need. After that, we, you, we can uh, send this as a result, result of the Azure function uh, as an HTTP response message. And that's all uh, Twilio needs, sorry, to send it back to the, to the, to the users. The, the, you just need an HTTP response and some text will appear uh, as a result, uh, like here, like uh, hello from Xamarin in this case, right? If I had this in some Xamarin application, c -sharp application, desktop application, it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can send this to our users, <coughs> okay? But the problem is what if the user the, uh, himself, the, herself, want to send something, how to process this message, uh, uh, yeah. And that's where serverless part enters. In this case, uh, we know the evolution of the applications. Uh, at the beginning, we worry about uh, servers. Uh, okay, uh, what is the size? What should be the size of our server? What type of operative system? We we need to focus on many problems. And at the end, we can develop an application. But uh, as the <coughs> cloud computing was becoming popular. Uh, we have, you know, some models such as uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and serverless is another one. In this case, you just worry about architecturing your application. You don't need to think about the server or the resources or to scale it. Someone else, in this case, let's say Microsoft, will do it for you, or a cloud provider will do it for you. So. Serverless doesn't mean that there is no server, but you just uh, forget or don't worry about that one. Serverless uh, is also, uh, let's say, quite cheap. Uh, so it, uh, let's say, the the the, billing, the the pricing is only when your um, your your code is being executed, uh, and when your code is being executed, well, serverless is even driven. So it means that. Uh, for example, when you send an HTTP request, it will run or execute the, the application. But maybe you, you can also create a timer trigger, like, okay, uh, every day at 9 a.m., uh, we will run this code. So it, it will trigger your, your code. Or maybe we, we have some other advanced scenarios. And maybe we have Cosmos DB. When the, there is a new row in our database, in our table or document, uh, we will trigger some or run, execute some code, and so on. So the, the code, your code is there, it's in the cloud, and you are not uh, built for that. You are built only when your code is executed. So that's, that's the idea. And you can very quickly go to production or to, to market. So you worry about applications, not for servers. For serverless, uh, there are many possibilities in, in Azure. There is Azure Functions, where you write the code. Uh, this is developer-oriented, or Logic Apps. For non-developers, you can use a uh, Visual Designer. Well, you also developers, we have used that one. So there are a lot of connectors. You can uh, send an email from Logic Apps, no code, only designing, like the flow of your uh, application. For example, uh, maybe you receive some um, uh, response from a Microsoft form, and you take these results uh, and build, and uh, maybe you insert them into a database and also send an email to someone else, like, okay, uh, there is a new response in your form, and this is the summary, something, something like that. Uh, and of course, we can, we can use different tools, um, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, and, and also the, even the portal. In Azure Portal, we have uh, uh, yeah, and, and it, an editor where we can add uh, whatever we, we want. So basically, Azure Functions is your code on the cloud. And there are different triggers. There are also different bindings, which means that, for example, uh, this is another, another scenario. We develop a mobile application. The user takes some picture, some photo, and we store it in uh, blob storage. But maybe we want to create different version, resized uh, or scaled versions of our picture in another uh, blob storage, because later we can use these smaller versions 
to store it in database or to present it to users so they don't have to uh, waste their data because yeah the, the the size will be smaller so we can create like automa automation automation sorry of, of this process uh, we simply the, the, as developers we only worry of about uh, sending this or storing it to blob storage another part of the process automatically will produce the scale escalated images uh, and you can use these bindings in your code as you can see the code can be really short here you don't see anything that looks like a blob storage sdk you just worry about your uh, file name or maybe your string your picture and you produce the uh, different versions in this case yeah resize uh, image builder is one uh, library but as you can see the the only mention of your blob storage is here in a json file where you reference like okay this is the connection our connection for our blob storage is uh, this actual web jobs storage this can be a setting in our app settings uh, yeah uh, uh, where the the cloud sorry where the connection string is is there mm -hmm. and yeah that, that's the relation and okay yeah basically for the actual functions i will show you the the full code of, of this last one receive message and you can see here that we have a project this is an azure functions project here i have already added in dependencies the um the 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 microsoft azure web Job extensions twilio and here i have an http trigger this one can accept get or post requests and we take some uh some some data the, the data that we receive from the from the http uh, request and this is the text that is coming from whatsapp right because uh, as i said we are connecting this to to, to twilio we just need to to clean it up to to pre-process this this data so we uh split we find this ampersand and also the uh, equal uh, sign and we will get some dictionary this dictionary contain different metadata including new media new media uh, if we analyze the the whatsapp message will have the number of let's say pictures or or maybe videos or attachments that the user can send in in a message so if this value is uh, one i said it to, to one but it can be two or three or whatever so if, if it is at least one, this is a picture or this is an image. If so, we will call our computer vision service to analyze that picture. And this picture, I can extract it because there is the media URL zero um, uh, key from our dictionary and we will get the uh, URL of our picture. If there is no image, we will use the Luis uh, cognitive service to analyze the text and we will obtain the city. And if there is a city, we will uh, get the weather of that city. So we are connecting what I presented a bit earlier. And, and yeah, after that, we will build, build a Twilio message and we will send it back. And yeah, this just to conclude this part, we can publish, even though I developed this locally on Visual Studio, I can publish it into Azure. So we are presented with a wizard very easily. We create the, the Azure function or we can link it to something that is already existing. And after that, if we go to our function, receive message, we can get an URL. And this URL is the one that we paste here in the Twilio sandbox for WhatsApp. And this, and now you will see the demo here. I will show you, this is my device, this is my iPhone, and I can now start by sending some message. I want to know, oh, sorry. I want to know, this is not an emulator, it's my real device. <laughs> the weather in Mexico City, for example. I, yeah, and that's it. And it will, there is no multimedia, there is no, uh, text no information 
And for some reason, it's a bit slow. OK, I don't know why. <laughs> well, let me try another one. I will now provide some picture. Let's see. OK, maybe this one that I took a bit earlier. Oh, yes, and now you see the, the previous response. The weather of Mexico City is clear. So yeah, it is there, but it took so that, some. So that's something that I was going to mention when you um, were talking about sort of the different um, you know, platform as a service and serverless. Uh, this is actually a really good use case of cold start, right? I'm pretty sure it was not being used and yeah. it took a little bit for it to get started. Yeah, the, yeah that is true. That is true. I, I forgot that it takes some time to uh, wake up. Uh, yeah, exactly. You, you, the, the virtual machine where your code is uh, deployed to takes some time to, to, to wake up. Uh, but after that, uh, yeah, it will be ready to, to, to process for the image, it didn't take too long. Uh, I think uh, when there are ten minutes of inactivity, it goes back to to sleep. So yeah, mm -hmm. and you see the difference of uh, in in responses. Here there was a text. Okay, this is the weather in Mexico, and this is the picture I took some in an it. It's a tree in a park with confidence, uh, forty-four percent or something, and then we can see some categories, some tags that were detected from the uh, computer vision service. If we are not satisfied with this, we can always use custom vision service to even uh, use our own tags or categories or whatever. And I just added also the the probability or the accuracy. Uh, yeah. And in this case, there are no objects, no friends, no faces. But if I provide maybe another one like this one, let's see if it detects my face. Or I can take also picture of me. Yeah, I use the, the gallery, but I can also use um, the, the real camera. So it yeah, that is- It didn't say it was a celebrity. <laughs> Sorry? It didn't say it was a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Maybe <laughs> in a few years later, it will detect, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, but it, it says now that there is a male of age 35. So yeah, and yeah, I am, well, okay, thank, thank you, Cognizers, because I am 30, 38. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, the, the, the idea here, basically, you, you, you saw it. Uh, when we provide some message, goes to Twilio uh, service, and it, uh, and it uh, sends requests to our Azure functions. If it is text, goes to Luis service. Otherwise, it goes to computer vision service. Uh, regardless of this uh, decision, it will build a response, and it will send it back to our users in the same uh, platform. And yeah, basically it's that. If you would like to build this type of applications, I have some. I have two tutorials: one in Dev2, another one in my blog. Uh, the second one is in Spanish. But there are also some um, posts or on Twilio uh, about uh, sending uh, messages and also receiving uh, media. Especially this one was useful to understand the the the. The, the dictionary uh, about the new media or how to extract the URL of this picture that we sent in the in the message. All right, thank you so much, Luis. It was an awesome demo, uh, and thank you for coming on the show. Um, next week we'll have Eric Jensen ha uh, joining us to talk about EF Core Power Tools and Nugget Pack Nugget packages. Oh my! So let stay tuned for that. And let's check out uh, our .NET, um, .NET Conf promo that is coming up next month. Save the date for .NET Conf 2021, November 9th through the 11th for the .NET 6 launch. .NET Conf is our annual free three-day virtual developer event co-organized by the .NET community and Microsoft, sponsored by the .NET Foundation and our ecosystem partners. For three days, you'll learn from featured speakers from the community and .NET teams at Microsoft, talking about .NET 6, C Sharp 10, Azure, Visual Studio, and more. This is your chance to learn, ask questions live, and get inspired for your next software project. We've got wall-to-wall -wall content for web, mobile, cloud, desktop, games, services, libraries, and a variety of platforms and devices, all with .NET. 
Everyone is going to learn something, no matter if you're just beginning or you're a seasoned engineer. Don't delay. Head to www.dotnetconf.net. That's .netconf.net to learn more and tune in. And you heard Jeff. So tune in for Donet Cuff coming up. Thank you so much for joining us and see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.